My So Quilty Life. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you are here. And if you're here and watching this video, you're probably ready to start month five of the Flower Sand Block of the Month. I'm so excited. I cannot believe we're already on month five. That's just so crazy, right? But before I dive into the tutorials making blocks nine and block 10, I thought I'd show you the quilt really quick so you could see what we are making today. So you do need your month five flower pack. So go ahead and tear this open and pull out your pattern. This is what your pattern will look like. Today we are making the block nine and block 10. Block 10 will be in a separate video, but these are in the spaces like the panels of the flower stand. I just love these blocks so much. Now they do take a while to make because there is a lot of pieces, but I promise you just hang in there, follow the tutorial and you will be just fine. But I really have no doubt that you're gonna struggle because we're already on month five and I know that you've become a pro by now of using these small pieces and working with a lot of pieces and making these blocks so I have all the faith in you today I am dressed in comfy clothes because I thought being comfy was probably better than trying to be cute for this video because it's gonna take a couple hours for me to finish the block now you won't be really watching a couple hours of video because I will speed it up when I'm sewing but um, I just wanted to be super comfy so are we ready to get started I thought I would show the quilt really quick and I'll do that in my front camera and then I'll lay it on the table for my top camera so here let me fold it in half really quick so we can see it because the part we're making is the bottom of the flower stand. So the blocks we are making are right here. These two blocks, let me, let me get it a little better here. There we go. Those two blocks right there that are in the bottom portion of the flower stand. Oh, aren't they so cute? Oh, I just love them. So cute. And we will be using the last part of our hand embroidery or our panel today. And I'll show you that in just a bit, but I'm going to go ahead and use my top camera so that you can see the blocks a little bit up close before we get started. Here is the block we'll be making in this tutorial today. This is block nine. It is super cute. It has two little flowers and then a vine. And I don't believe we had made these flowers yet in um, our flower stand quilt so that'll be fun I love making those and then we have our cute little flower stand sign this is welcome to the flower stand now this is your hand embroidery this should be the last hand embroidery that you have for the quilt and or you can use your pre-printed panel those are available in my shop if you would like to pick one up but this says sunflowers two dollars each tulips two dollars each pansies one dollar each and poppies one dollar now wouldn't that be so fun if we could actually get flowers for that much today okay so i'm about ready to get started are you all right let's get started okay so just like i mentioned you do need to have your month five flower pack this includes your pattern some goodies and the qr code to sign up for the giveaway so I went ahead and took out my pattern and what we're going to do is we're going to open up to page one on our pattern. Go ahead and get that open and start cutting out your pieces for block nine. So if we go to my top camera, you can see all of my pieces that I cut out already so that I could be prepared for this tutorial. Don't forget to use these cute little alphabet markers that I included in month one flower pack to stay organized. They're fun, cute too. I love them. They're so cute. Okay, so go ahead and cut out your pieces. I went ahead and did that already. And I am actually gonna be using the panel for this second quilt that I am making. I did the flower sand and hand embroidery for the first quilt. I did this sign in hand embroidery, but for this quilt, I'm using the flower sand printed panel. So again, you can pick these up in my shop. All you have to do is cut them out and get sewing, super easy. Well, you also kind of might have to press too. <laughs> so, but you know what I mean. So it's super easy. Okay, we're gonna get started with step number one. I'm gonna set all of this stuff to the side. So for step number one, we are just drawing the line on the back of our fabric square. So in step one, it says that we need to draw diagonal lines on the back of fabric O, Q, S, and Y. And I actually don't do that. I know that you hear me on every video, but I like to use diagonal seam tape. This is what diagonal seam tape looks like. I just stick it to my machine and I align the corner, if I'm sewing at a diagonal, the corner on the red line all the way down. And that helps me not have to draw all these diagonal lines. But I also use, when I do, I use a friction fine line marker or pen because this will evaporate with heat. So this one's pink, super cute, super cute. Okay, 
So we're going to go ahead and move on to step two. For, so for step two, we need our fabric A, which is our pre-printed panel, welcome to the flower sign, or your hand embroidered welcome to the flower sign. And you're going to go ahead and cut this out if you're working on the panel. So I'm going to cut that out in just a bit. But we also need fabric V and fabric W. So this is the border of the sign. Okay, I went ahead and cut my panel out so it's ready to go. You can find what you need to trim your panel to or if you cut your fabric bigger in order to hand embroider it just in case you had some raveling edges, go ahead and trim that to what it needs to be in the A column. So all we're gonna do here, super simple. These are simple. All we're gonna do is assemble our fabric V to the sides of our welcome to the flower stand sign. And then we're gonna assemble our fabric W's to the top and bottom. And you're gonna press towards your peach fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And when I get back, we'll be on step three. Okay, I just finished with step two. Now we're gonna move on to step three. This turned out so cute, so adorable. Okay, so now we can move these markers, put them back in our baggie. All right, now we're gonna move on to step three. So for step three, we need our fabric C, rectangle, and our fabric one, fabric Y, square. This is our brown swoosh. So this is the first time I think we're using fabric for our flower stand. And all we're gonna do here, we're making one of these C units. We're just gonna assemble right here. We're just gonna assemble on our diagonal line, but mine's imaginary. It's there, but not really. <laughs> so go ahead and do that. You're gonna to press towards your fabric Y, and then we're gonna be putting together our sign unit. Okay, here is my C unit. So now we're gonna be putting together the sign unit. So you do need your sign unit, you need your C unit, and you need fabric I. So for this step, we're gonna be assembling our fabric I to the sign unit with our quarter inch seam and assembling our C unit to the top with our quarter inch seam. You're gonna be pressing towards these low volume fabrics. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and when I get back, we'll move on to step five. Okay, here we are. Here is my sign unit. So, so simple. This was easy guys. I know you won't have any trouble making this a little unit at all. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to step five. So we're gonna make these cute little flowers and this is what they look like. These small little flowers are so adorable. So this is what we are making. I went ahead and made one of them just to speed up this video, but you do need your fabric R squares, you need fabric S squares, and you need fabric Q squares. All we are doing is placing one fabric S in the corner and sewing on our diagonal line and we're placing three fabric Q squares on the corners, the remaining corners and assembling on our diagonal line. Easy peasy, right? But pay close attention to the instructions. I have you pressing two one way and two the other so that your seams and on these diagonal lines where they really need to, you know, line up right here, um, I'm having you press so that you can nest your seams. So go ahead and assemble all four of those little R units and press according to your instructions. You should have two R1 units and two R2 units for each color. Again, I went ahead and did that for this crosshatch print and for this flower print, I still have to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And when I get back, we're gonna put the flower together. Okay, I just got done with my R units and now we're gonna put them together. This is my favorite part. Now, there is a lot that has to line up here, but if you paid close attention to how you were pressing in the instructions, they should nest perfectly. So one of the things that we have to make sure of when we are putting these together, so you're gonna put two together, is you wanna make sure that these will line up right here to create those points. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble with my quarter inch seam. You're gonna assemble your R2 to your R1, and then you're gonna assemble your R1 to your R2, and after that, you're gonna press open, and after that, you're gonna assemble them together, and that will create this adorable flower here. So cute, so cute. I love little flowers. Look how adorable that is. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and when we get back, I'll move on to step seven. Okay, I just got done finishing my step six, so here is what it looks like. So now I have two, you're gonna make one in each color. So now we're gonna move on, I'm gonna set that aside, we're gonna move on to step seven. So for step seven, we're just making the little leaves. So what you need is you're gonna separate it, you're gonna have two that are gonna be in the left and one on the right like this okay and what we need is our fabric O. so we need our fabric t and our fabric O. and what we're going to do on the left side is we are going to put our fabric O in the top right and bottom left now for our right unit so our rt unit you're going to do the opposite you're going to put fabric O in the top left and bottom right you're going to assemble on your diagonal line and then you're going to press towards fabric o and then you're going to trim and then we'll move on to step eight okay i just got done assembling my t unit so here we have our solo r unit so we have one right unit and two left units this is what they should look like so now we're going to set those aside and we are going to move on to step eight. Now step eight has three different things that you have to sew. So just pay close attention and make sure you don't get your pieces mixed up and you will be just fine. Okay, so first we need to make our E unit. So we need fabric E and fabric Y. So one fabric E and one fabric Y. Okay, so we have that. And then we need one fabric J and one fabric Y. So here's fabric J and fabric Y. And then lastly, we need one fabric K and one fabric Y. So here's fabric K. And we'll lay these out just like they look in the diagram. Okay, for fabric E, you are assembling your fabric Y square on the top left corner, just like that. And this shows exactly how it's supposed to be in the pattern. For fabric J, you're also going to be sewing, assembling your fabric Y to the top left. But for fabric K, you're going to be assembling your fabric Y to the bottom left just like that so go ahead and assemble on your diagonal line press them and you will have your e j and k units and then we will be moving on to step nine okay i just got done making my e unit my j unit and my k unit and here they are oh that way that way so this is what they should look like laid out just like the diagram now you guys should be super used to using and making these stitch and flip units so i know you're not going to have any difficulties with them but this is what they should look like now we're going to set those aside so many setting aside so let's set all of that aside i'm running out of room so i'm gonna move those up like that there we go <laughs> okay so now we're going to move on to step nine so for step nine we are going to be taking our fabric b rectangle and we're going to be taking two y squares so all we're going to do is assemble our y squares on the bottom okay on the diagonal line just assemble on that diagonal line the next thing with step nine is we also need fabric H. And fabric H, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna assemble your fabric Y squares to the bottom corners, just like that. And then you're gonna press both of them towards fabric Y. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And when I get back, we'll move on to step 10. Okay, I just finished with the B unit right here, and then our H unit. So now I'm going to set those aside and we are going to move on to step 10. Now for step 10, we are assembling a lot of different units. So just pay close attention to this video and your instructions and you will get through it just fine. Okay, for step 10, we need a fabric G rectangle. So I'm going to lay it out just how we're going to have it in the pattern. We need a fabric X rectangle. We need a fabric X square. We also need our E unit, J unit, and L, T unit. So that is this right here. Right here. This is what your left top leaf unit will look like. So we've got a couple of steps in one here. Whenever you see an arrow with a number in my pattern, that actually represents your sewing order and your pressing order. So, so for the first part of assembly, we are just assembling our fabric X to our unit here. 
Then we are assembling these two pieces to our leaf unit. Then we are assembling these two pieces and after that we will assemble these together. While I'm here, because I like to combine steps, we're going to move on to step 11. So for step 11 you need fabric L, fabric N, and your one flower unit. This is the one that has the little pink flowers. So all we're doing here is we are assembling fabric N to the bottom and pressing, and then assembling fabric L to the side here with our quarter inch seam. Now I'm going to also combine step 12 because I love combining steps. So for step 12, we need an LT unit right here and we need fabric M and we need a fabric E. And all we're doing here is we are just assembling these two together with our quarter inch seam. So now I'm also going to move on to step 13. Okay, so for step 13, we need our remaining flower unit. We need our remaining RT. And let me move some of these out of the way so you don't get confused. So we need fabric M, F, P, and D. So M, F, P, and D. And what we're doing here is fabric F goes there, fabric P goes there. Okay, and all we're doing here is assembling according to the little arrows with the numbers. We're first assembling these two with our quarter inch seam and pressing. Then we're gonna assemble these two to that unit, okay? Then we're assembling our fabric M to the top of the flower and then assembling that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all that. I know that is a lot. That is a lot of steps in one. But by now, I think you guys are pretty confident in putting these blocks together. I don't think you're gonna have any issue working through those steps. So I'm gonna do that and when I get back, we'll be moving on to step 14. Okay, I just got done with step 10, 11, 12, and 13. That were so many steps combined into one, but we're going to go with it. Okay, so for step 11, your unit, your left top leaf unit should look like this. We also made step 11. Your left flower unit should look like this. And then step 12, your bottom leaf unit should look like this. And then a long one, step 13, your right leaf unit should look like that. So we are just moving right along. Now we're gonna move on to step 14. So for step 14, we need a couple of these units we just made, but we also need a fabric U. So fabric U is our long little green stem. So what we need to do is we're putting this unit here, this unit here, and this unit here, and our fabric U. So this is what it, just lay it out. This is what it'll look like first and this. Okay, so again, we've got a couple of steps to do before we can assemble this whole thing. First, we are assembling these two units together and pressing. After that, you're assembling the fabric U to the side. Then you're assembling that bottom piece there and pressing and then you're assembling that. Easy peasy, right? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and when I get back, we will move on to step 15. We are almost done making this block. Okay, I just finished making that leaf unit. So now we're gonna move on to step 15. So for step 15, we are just assembling our little sign unit with our left unit with a quarter inch seam and pressing towards our sign unit, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll be right back to move on to step 16. Okay, here is my step 15, so now let's move on to step 16. Okay, let's move on to our final step, step 16. So we have a couple of things we have to do first before we can assemble the block. First, this is gonna be on the side over here, but we need to assemble our remaining fabric X's, so we need two. So we're gonna assemble two fabric X's here and here, and then we also need to assemble with this remaining unit we made in a previous step, we need to assemble an X to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those two things and when I get back, we can finish up this block. Okay, I just assembled these pieces here. This one will go on the side of our block here, right here. And this one will go, let's see, right here but we first need to assemble this piece to this really quick. So here's what we're gonna do. 
we're going to first assemble these two together and press. Then we're going to assemble this top piece to that piece. And then we're going to assemble this to the side. And then we will be all done with our block. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. When I get back, I'll be all finished. Okay, I just finished up with step 16, which means that is the final step and my block is finished. Are you ready to see it? Okay, here she is. This is so adorable, is it not? I love it so much. And it's actually a lot easier to piece than you probably felt like in the beginning when you saw the quilt or when you opened up your month five flower pack. But here is block nine. Looks so cute. I just love the little sign, especially when it's in the quilt. It looks so good. So I hope you had a great time making this block nine. I know I did. I know that each block we make, the steps get easier and easier and easier to do, and you build up more and more confidence. Be sure to check out the next tutorial where I show you how to make block 10. That one is a little bit longer because you're making a lot of flowers, but I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you found this tutorial to be really helpful. Don't forget to like like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Now get in those comfy clothes and let's get sewing block nine. Bye guys.